card, please. When Nick Kyrgios pulled out of the Winston-Salem Open in August 2021, it opened the door in the main draw for Noah Rubin. The American, ranked outside the top 300 at the time, had been beaten in qualifying, but took Kyrgios's place in the draw as a lucky loser. It was only the second time in 18 months he had been in an ATP Tour main draw. But while it was Rubin's lucky day, it wasn't a big payday, due to a contentious and little-known rule. You see, before his withdrawal, Kyrgios had already been drawn to play three times Grand Slam champion and former world number one Andy Murray. After the Australian pulled out just before the match, citing a knee complaint, Rubin played instead and lost. But it was Kyrgios who got the $4,000 prize money for a first-round exit. Why? Well, you have to look at Chapter 3 of the ATP rulebook, specifically Rule 3.8b, which states, the lucky loser replacing a player who was withdrawn on site shall receive final round qualifying prize money plus money earned in the main draw minus the prize money paid to the withdrawing player. So, with Rubin going no further in the main draw, he received only the $1,840 earned from two qualifying matches. Kyrgios walked away from the tournament with twice as much without even playing. The rule is controversial, but it's designed to prevent injured players from turning up to matches they have no intention of completing, just to retire after a few games to collect their money. The WTA has the same rule, but the four Grand Slams, overseen by the ITF, do give 50% of the first round prize money to any lucky losers. That was no use to Rubin though. He summed up his situation with a pithy tweet. Sucks, doesn't it? He's not the first lucky loser to slip up on the rulebook though. And bizarrely, another example also involved a late Kyrgios withdrawal. Back in 2018, Kyrgios had been drawn to play fellow Aussie Bernard Tomic at that year's Roland Garros, but pulled out with an elbow injury. The lucky loser chosen to replace him was India's Prajnesh Gunaswaran for what would have been his Grand Slam debut. But with seven players already selected before him to replace previous withdrawals, Gunaswaran had decided his luck was out and had already left Paris to prepare for an ATP Challenger event in Vicenza, Italy, which coincided with the first week of the French Open. Crucially, the draw had already been made, and Rule 7.6a of the ATP Handbook states, Once a player enters and is accepted into the main draw of singles, doubles or the qualifying competition, he is committed to that tournament for the week. So Gunaswaran had to give up his lucky loser spot and play in Vicenza. This is heartbreaking and I don't know how to react to this, said Gunaswaran, but rules are rules. The next cab off the rank was Argentina's Marco Tringaliti. He too had left Paris by this stage and returned to his home in Barcelona, where he was hosting family members on a vacation. Without a tournament to play in, he was allowed to take on Tomic and opted to take a 10-hour drive back to the French capital, with his brother, mother and grandmother in tow. When he reached Roland Garros, he beat Tomic in four sets before bowing out in round two. Meanwhile, in Vicenza, Gunaswaran lost in the first round, perhaps distracted by what might have been. Had he stayed in Paris and played Tomic, he would have earned at least 20,000 euros but instead his trip to Italy earned him just 660 euros. Retiring during matches can cause rule but chaos too when it comes during round robin events. In 2007, James Blake was eliminated from the Las Vegas Open, reinstated and then eliminated again, all in the space of 24 hours. Blake was playing Juan Martín del Potro and needing to beat him for the loss of no more than five games to advance. The American was leading 6-1, 3-1 and close to qualifying when the Argentinian retired through injury. Under the rules, Del Potro's withdrawal meant he had only completed one match, knocking him out of a three-way tie with Blake and Russian Evgeny Korolev. And since Korolev had previously beaten Blake, the Russian advanced. Then, the ATP reinstated Blake, saying the rule had not been properly explained, only to reverse its own U-turn the next morning. Under its own rules, the ATP cannot overrule the ATP supervisor on such matters. Blake accepted the final outcome with good grace, but questioned the fact Del Potro basically had the fate of two players in his hands. Once he was down 6-1, 3-1, he could have lost a few more games and allowed me to go through, or he could have retired and let Evgeny go through, said Blake. To put that kind of control in a player's hands is something that needs to be looked at. 
Some rule breaches are punishable by fines, which can vary in size. One common fine in high-profile cases at Grand Slams is $10,000. Damaging a practice court at Wimbledon costs Serena Williams ten grand. Victor Troitsky got the same fine at SW19 for calling Damiano Torella horrible and the worst umpire ever. While at the 2021 US Open, Riley Opelka was slapped with the same $10,000 fine for a bag that featured a logo which was too big. Opelka had walked onto court against Lorenzo Massetti with a pink tote bag bearing the name of a Belgian art gallery. This apparently contravened Rule 2F of Article 3C in the ITF's Grand Slam rulebook, which outlines acceptable on-court equipment for players. It allows for two commercial identifications, neither of which exceeds 4 square inches or 26 square centimeters. Opelka labeled the fine a joke, adding, The head referee was telling me, you should have come in and had the thing measured. We had that logo specifically made. It was not the same bag I was using at the French Open. We made the effort to make it smaller. My job is not to measure logos. My job is to win matches. To the untrained eye, tennis has a strange scoring system and some unusual rules. But whether it's prize money given to players who haven't played or large fines for the wrong size of logo, it can surprise even the most seasoned watcher at times with its left-field rulebook.